In the year of 1987, researchers discovered a battlefield in Germany, and it was the lost for over 2,000 years battleground of the Battle of Teutoburg Forest. A battle that some may argue is the single most important in the history of Rome, a battle which defined Europe, and we can still see the effects of it today. After the discovery of the battlefield, the archaeologists tried to find the answer of how it's possible that the great Roman army was defeated by a group of non-trained barbarians. The Romans were tricked and led to their doom thanks to a man called Arminius, a Roman soldier. But Arminius was not an ordinary soldier, he also born as a barbarian and was raised as Roman. He was son of Segimerius the Conqueror, the leader of the Germanic tribe called the Cheruski. At the time, the Cheruski were under Roman control and the Romans demanded, as part of their tribute, that their leader send his sons to Rome for study, but also as a ransom, just to avoid unnecessary barbarian rebellions. So when Arminius was just a boy, his father gave him and his brother Flavius to the Romans as part of the payment. They received education and training in Rome. And in the city, Arminius found a new and different life than the barbarian life. He learned Latin and became civilized. He became a great student, and when came the age, he joined the military. Arminius participated in campaigns where he was awarded with the equestrian rank which can be referred as a knight in modern times. In the age of 25, Arminius became a close advisor and a friend to one of the most significant Roman generals at the time. His name was Publius Quintilius Varus. Varus was a Roman general and a politician, which was common for the Romans. And also, he was an ally and a friend of the emperor Augustus Octavian himself. On the other hand, for the barbarians, he was known for being ruthless and for punishing any rebels by crucifixion. Because of this, he was feared by his enemies and highly respected by the Roman Senate. Arminius gained a lot of trust from Varus by being a competent and honorable soldier. In between 6 and 9 AD, 8 of 11 legions left Germania to crush a rebellion in the Balkans. Varus was left with three legions to keep control on the territory of Germania. So in the year 9 AD, he was in charge of the 17, 18 and 19 legions. Arminius also was in Germania at this time. Being a native, he could speak the local language as well as Latin and would be helpful in the situation. But when Arminius arrived to Germania and he got in touch with his people from youth, something changed on him. But there is no written record of what happened to Arminius up to this point. Also, it is known that Arminius had a relation with a local princess called Tusnelda, daughter of the prince Segestes, which was in favor of the Romans, but was not in favor of their relationship. In reality, nobody really knows what changed in him. Maybe he had a change of heart, maybe he decided to take his inheritance and become a Cherusky leader. What we know is that, secretly, Arminius had turned against Rome and decided to betray their trust. He made a secret allegiance with around 50 Germanic tribes and united them to fight together against Roman domination. When Varus was preparing to leave his summer camp in Vetera and move the legions to the camp of Maguntiacum, news arrived from Arminius of a local rebellion. The reports were fabricated by Arminius, there was no rebellion. Arminius knew that Varus would see this as an occasion which required his prompt attendance on the spot. And he would feel very confident by having Arminius on his side. But he was kept in studied ignorance of this being part of a huge rebellion. In the evening before the battle, the prince Segestes came to Varus. The reluctant father-in-law of Arminius was there to tell the Romans what he heard among the barbarians. 
he heard about a betrayal that he discovered by seeing Arminius among the Germanic leaders when they were planning an uprising. But he was ignored by Varus due to the fact that Segestes had a personal aversion towards Arminius, and this could be simply a plot to break the relation between Arminius and Tusnelda. And after dismissing Segestes, Varus continued with his preparations. The Roman forces that Varus arranged to stop the rebellion consisted of all three legions, six military units of auxiliary troops, and three squadrons of cavalry. Most of them have no experience in combat with Germanic barbarians. They followed to the area of the Teutoburg forest, marching towards the rebellion. Once they entered to the forest, the paths became more narrow and muddy. And if this wasn't enough, they were caught in a big raining storm. Because of these difficulties, they had to march in a straight line. And as deeper they entered, the line needed to be stretched even more because of the density of the forest and at some point there was no way to perform any military formation. When the enemy finally attacked, the line was around 15 to 20 meters long. Arminius' plan had worked perfectly. By knowing exactly how the Romans would react, he was able to direct his troops to attack their enemy by performing isolated attacks to the Roman soldiers. And as the line was stretched so much, and because of the adverse conditions, the commanding officers were unable to notice the numerous and sporadic attacks. The barbarians knew well how to prepare for that environment, and they were lightly equipped, wearing light clothes, light swords, large lances, narrow bladed, and short spears. The Romans had suffered an enormous loss, and as the attacks increased, soon became evident that the only way is to run as they were already outnumbered and the weather conditions were making everything worse. Most of the soldiers who tried to escape became isolated and an easy prey for the barbarians who were killing Romans easily. Some of the officers escaped to be later caught and taken as prisoners, some tortured to death or sacrificed in horrible ways to the Germanic gods and the lower-ranking soldiers that weren't killed became slaves. Varus, seeing all hope is lost, committed suicide. Roman historians estimated casualties around a range between 15,000 to 20,000 dead. The remains of the battlefield tell the archaeologists how horrific the events were. Many Roman soldiers were killed violently and stripped of their armors and their dead bodies left in the forest to rot. They also discovered that some of the soldiers, which were captured by the Germanic barbarians, later were boiled in pots and their bones were used for rituals for their indigenous religion ceremonies. Small items like buckles, hinges with steel attached armor body parts were found. This suggests that the parts of the armor were ripped off the body together with the human parts. There was as many as 6,000 pieces of Roman armors found, and only one piece that appears to be clearly Germanic. However, the reason also can be that the Germanic barbarians have removed their dead to bury them with other gear as was common by their tradition. And also, the Germanic barbarians wore more organic armor made of leather which doesn't stand the test of time in muddy and rainy conditions like a forest, like the metal armors of the Romans. After all the events, there was a few survivors from the Roman side who managed to escape the forest and found their way into safety. The news they brought to Rome was so shocking that many believed it was a supernatural cause and the goddess victory was against them. From the Roman point of view, this battle was seen as a horrible tragedy. The Roman historian Suetonius wrote a century later that this defeat nearly wrecked the empire. He also mentioned in his work that the emperor Augustus, who was ruling at the time, when he heard about this failure, he was so shocked that he was hitting his head against the wall of his palace and repeatedly shouting 
Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. The numbers 17 and 19 were never used again by Roman legions. Only the number 18 was used again by the Emperor Nero, but later disbanded by the Emperor Vespasian. This battle marks what ultimately would be the division between Germany and France, which stands even today, where the French would speak a Latin language from Roman roots and Germany a Germanic language from barbarian roots. Even English, which is a language with Germanic roots, have 60% of its vocabulary coming from Latin and Greek, and have its own formation due to the outcome of this battle. And also, in the end, the Germanic barbarians played a major role in the fall of the occidental part of Rome. Do you think Varus could have done something different to avoid lose the legions and keep Germania Romanized? And if this defeat never happened, how Europe would look today? Would Rome ever fall? If the empire never had fallen, would we have flying cars today? We would like to hear your opinion. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and you like to rediscover the past, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated on Moas Maiorum. We publish videos every week. Tibi gratias agu pro vigilabo.